What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to trade stocks while on vacation. And for those of you guys that don't know, I've mentioned it over the past couple of videos at this point, you probably know that I'm on vacation right now in Mexico, so it's been a bit difficult for me to trade like I usually do when I'm back home in the United States. I live in New Jersey, you know, when I'm home in my element, it's much easier to trade than when I'm here on vacation in Mexico. And I'm going to be talking about a couple of strategies here that I've been using to trade. Really one strategy that I've been using. So without further ado, guys, let's just hop right into it. If you do enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you do enjoy the content, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Video, and let's get right into it guys so we all know at this point you know when you're on vacation it's difficult with the Wi-Fi situation depending on where you are it's kind of hard to be on the internet trading stocks right you may have an hour or two in the morning depending on what you're doing where you are you may be doing tours you may be going to the beach you may be you know out where there's no internet and you may not be able to access your platform, your brokerage to place trades. So there's this one thing that I personally use. It's called an OCO bracket order that, that pretty much allows you to set a stop loss and a limit sell at the same time. And when one hits, you know, let's say the stop loss hits, it cancels the other one. And let's say the limit sell hits, it cancels the stop loss. And this is something very awesome, a, a tool that you can use when you're not actively at your computer, which happens when you're on vacation, right? Me personally, these past couple of days, I haven't really been able to be on my computer at all, but I've been able to use OCO bracket orders to help me make profits while I'm not at my computer, right? And you can actually use this when you're not even on vacation. Let's say you're going about your day, you don't have time to constantly look at your platform at your brokerage, you can put in an OCO bracket order and go about your day and you may get a stop loss order, you may get a limit sell order and make profits. And let's just go to the Safari tab here very quickly so I can show you guys a bit closer, you know, what is a OCO bracket order. So OCO, you guys can see one cancels the other order. What is an OCO bracket order? Well, an OCO is a pair of orders stipulating that one, if one order executes, then the other order is automatically canceled. An OCO order combines a stop order with a limit order on an automated trading platform. When either the stop or limit price is reached and the order executed, the other order automatically gets canceled. Experienced traders use OCO orders to mitigate risk and to enter the market. So typically, um, without an OCO order, you can't really set both a stop and a limit at the same time or a limit sell. Hence why an OCO has been created. And I know there aren't a bunch, uh, there's some platforms that don't offer OCO, but I think um, TD offers it. I don't use TD, I use Fidelity, and, and I know for sure Fidelity offers it because I personally use it, right? And again, these are very, very helpful when you're outside, not connected to the Wi-Fi. Maybe you're not glued to your screen and it allows you to trade on the go pretty much, right? So let's go over some examples here. So let's say, you know, you want to trade, let's just go with DGAS, right? Let's just go to DGAS because I'm seeing natural gas right now. Um, you know, it's at a pretty interesting spot. So let's say you wanted to trade DGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas natural gas is selling off, right? We notice here natural gas is getting rejected by that 50 simple moving average here on the 184 hour chart. And this has been a spot of rejection resistance over the past couple of days or rather the past couple of weeks at this point, right? Notice how it's been getting rejected at this level. We've popped up. We're seeing that resistance and we're slowly starting to get rejected. So let's say we want to get into D gas right now. Let's say I want to put in an order and then go to the B Beach and forget about it, right? Because that's honestly what I'm about to do right now. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to go on some tours. 
maybe hit the pool, you know, go to the buffet, do whatever, right? So let's say I wanted to do that. I'd go to DGAS right now, I'd open up my Fidelity platform, and I'd set an OCO bracket order. So we can go here, and let's say I want to put my limit sell at the 180 SMA, or rather the 50 SMA resistance here at on the 20-day, one-hour chart. So I'd put, you know, the order sell, uh, the limit sell here at 181, and then let's say I want to cut my losses on DGAS. Let's say it doesn't go my way, let's say it reverses to the downside and I want to set my loss let's say at about $170 you know right at the support level right here which was an old resistance from back in the beginning of June at about $170 so the window that I want to trade in let's say we'll get this drawing tool very quickly the window I want to trade in is between $180, $181, again, putting us right under that 50 SMA, um, the resistance here, and the support at about $170. So this $10 window, this $10 gap, is where I'm pretty much going to be setting my orders. The stop loss here at $170, you know, the limit sell here at about $180, $181. So let's say this continues to run. I take a position here at $176. We get in. You know, let's say I get in here, the stock or rather the ETF continues to run up. It hits this. I get my profits. What happens there, guys? It cancels this order, the stop loss order at about $170 or, or wherever, wherever we set it, which in this case is at $170. But let's say the flip side happens, right? Let's say, you know, we start to get rejected at this level. We start to sell off and we're inching towards that stop loss. Let's say we hit that stop loss at 170. We take that little loss of 1%, 2%, whatever it may be. And again, you know, you have to understand your own risk tolerance. Let's say you want to lose, you know, 3, 4% to give it some more buffer. You can set it at 3, 4%, whatever you guys are comfortable with. You know, let's say it triggers the 170. Well, what happens at that case? You know, it's going to cancel the $180 limit sell. So this is really what an OCO bracket order is. Very, very simple, um, very basic. I use this all the time when I'm on vacation. And whenever I'm not around my computer, let's say I want to run an errand. Let's say I want to, you know, not trade for the rest of the day or be at my computer for the rest of the day. I can just set an OCO bracket order and that takes care of the work. So let's take a look at another example very very quickly here using ticker symbol JNUG this is JNUG it's a 3x leveraged ETF that trades on gold right so let's say we want to set an order an OCO bracket order on JNUG so let's say I took a position right now at $12.15 and I wanted to set the stop loss right under or rather once if it broke you know this 50 SMA so let's say I wanted to set the order and we'll put this drawing tool here very quickly. You know, let's say I wanted to set the order at about 1180. So we take a position at $12. I set one of the stop orders, you know, the stop loss order at 1181. And let's say I set the limit sell order at let's say 1265, right? So you guys probably have the hang of this now. So let's say, you know, we start to sell off. It doesn't go our way. We start to get more and more red in our position. We start to break into the $11 range. Let's say we start to creep towards that 50 SMA. And then once it hits our stop order right at this line that I just set at about 1180, you know, that's going to cancel the limit sell order and vice versa, right? You know, we hit, let's say we hit Hit up here, we start to get green on our position, we get more and more profits, we hit 1275, 1260, wherever we do set that limit sell, it hits that, we lock in our profits, and it cancels um, the stop loss. So that's pretty much the main strategy that I'm using. I know a bunch of you guys probably don't know what an OCO order is, and again, I think Robinhood, maybe some of these discount brokerages, they don't have an OCO bracket order, which does suck. So in that case, um, you're going to have to figure out a different strategy, maybe just set a window in the morning of one to two hours to trade if you're using Robinhood or one of these discount brokerages because let's say you don't set an OCO order 
you know, you may lose a bunch of money. You may miss out on a profit if you don't set um, a, a limit sell, right? It's kind of tricky at that point, but if you do have OCO, it's definitely worth using when you are trading on the go and on um, vacation. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think about OCO orders? I'd love to know. Have you used them? If you enjoyed enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.